Today I'm going to show you two methods to make benzylic acid. One is the classic one using benzyl and the second one is a different one using benzoin and potassium bromate. Do not repeat anything you see here at home because I'm using dangerous reagents and I don't want you to get hurt. For the classic synthesis of benzylic acid, you're going to need 70 grams of benzyl, 70 grams of potassium hydroxide, 140 milliliters of distilled water, and 174 milliliters of ethanol. We are also going to need hydrochloric acid. Benzyl is the slightly yellow chemical with the formula you can see above. I got it from the laboratorium discount and if you want to order from them, you can use the discount code in the description. We began by weighing out the yellow powder, which is the benzyl. Because the small glass only contained 25 grams of benzyl, I had to open the big one and weigh out the rest. Everything was then added to a 1 liter round bottom flask alongside the stirfish. The potassium hydroxide was weighed out next and also added. Next we are going to add distilled water. I began by weighing out 70 grams of it, but I should have weighed out 140 grams immediately. The paper I read called for dissolving the potassium hydroxide in distilled water first before adding it to the benzyl, but I thought this wouldn't be a problem. It was a problem. It heated up and this might have impacted our yield. The solution turns pinkish black and we are going to see how this is going to impact our yield. I also added the ethanol and then heating and stirring were turned on. The mix was then refluxed for 15 minutes. Afterwards stirring was turned back off. If you are interested in the mechanism behind the benzylic acid rearrangement, you can pause now. We let the flask stand for about 15 more minutes to let it cool down. Then everything was transferred to a beaker. To get all of the powder over into the beaker, the flask was rinsed a few times using the brownish solution. The beaker was then put into the fridge overnight to allow it to chill and the next day we were left with this crystalline mass. The alkaline solution containing leftover potassium hydroxide was filtered off using vacuum filtration. This stuff still looks dirty, but we got rid of a lot of the contaminants. To get rid of even more of the contaminants, this stuff, which is potassium benzylate, needs to be rinsed with ice cold ethanol. This was the most satisfying cleanup I have ever seen. It's not pure yet, but this was satisfying. To continue with the cleanup, the potassium benzylate was transferred to a beaker, a lot of distilled water was added and we heated it up in order to dissolve all of it. You can see that there are some chunks refusing to dissolve in the water. This might be left over benzyl because benzyl is poorly soluble and is therefore not going to pass through the next filtration. I don't know why exactly, but my paper called for adding about 1 ml of hydrochloric acid in order to precipitate some insoluble oil, but I guess this didn't happen in our case. I guess adding hydrochloric acid was unnecessary and we could have done without it. To get rid of benzyl and other insoluble contaminants, another filtration was performed while hot. We want benzylic acid, but this is a solution of potassium benzylate. In order to precipitate benzylic acid, a stronger acid thus needs to be added. I used hydrochloric acid, but sulfuric acid should also be fine. Hydrochloric acid was added until a piece of pH strip turned bright red. I then added another milliliter using a pipette, and as I saw that we got no more precipitate, I stopped the hydrochloric acid addition. The suspension was stirred for about 5 minutes, and after it settled, we were ready for the next step. How do you think we are going to do this filtration? Well, that's right, another vacuum filtration is best because I'm lazy and I don't want to wait. The benzylic acid was washed with about 100 milliliters of distilled water and we got rid of most leftover water by letting it stand on the vacuum filter. Because there's leftover water in it, it was scraped onto a big watch glass and placed into my normal desiccator over an hydrous calcium chloride. We obtained 64 grams of benzylic acid with this method and this represents a yield of 84.2%. Now that you have seen the classic method to make benzylic acid, I'm going to show you another method utilizing benzoin made from benzaldehydes and potassium bromate. For the preparation, we are going to need 98.6 grams of benzoin, 
109.6 grams of sodium hydroxide, 27.5 grams of potassium bromate and a lot of distilled water. We then began by adding the sodium hydroxide to a beaker which already contained the stirfish. The second reagent I weighed out was potassium bromate. I even made this potassium bromate myself in a previous video. Keep in mind that potassium bromate is carcinogenic and you should wear gloves while handling it. We then added approximately 193.2 grams of distilled water to this mixture. The beaker was quickly put onto a hot plate and heating and stirring were turned on. The homemade benzoin will be added in portions over the course of about an hour. During this time we are also going to add about 200 additional milliliters of distilled water. My hot plate was connected to an electric thermocouple because the temperature of the solution should be kept between 85 and 90 degrees C. If it got too hot a lot of benzhydrol would be produced and we don't want that. The moment all benzoin has been added the mixture was stirred at 85 degrees celsius for 5 to 6 hours. During this time our benzoin is oxidized to benzyl by the potassium bromate. Something known as the benzylic acid rearrangement takes place and in our case a salt of benzylic acid which was sodium benzylate was created. If you are interested in the mechanism of the benzylic acid rearrangement check the link I put into the video description. As you can see whatever was left in the beaker does not look clean. Therefore I diluted it down using 700 additional milliliters of distilled water and left it to stand until the next day. Sodium benzylate is water soluble and should stay in solution and this allows us to get rid of all of that contamination. The contamination might be left of a benzoin but it could also be benzhydrol. A gravity filtration was performed to get rid of the solids and as you can see our stirfish caught some sort of disease. The solution was then poured back into a now clean beaker. As you can see it does not look clear but it looks cleaner. Next we need to turn the benzylic acid salts into benzylic acid. We are going to do this by using hydrochloric acid. I used about 500 milliliters of 37% hydrochloric acid which is a huge excess. Benzylic acid has a solubility of about 2 grams per liter so we are not going to lose a lot. Once the acid was added it immediately crashed out and formed these flakes. Everything also turned slightly orange because leftover bromates release bromine. After the gravity filtration I also washed the product using 100 milliliters of distilled water. As I was not happy with the bromine contamination I added the wet filter cake to a beaker. As I didn't want to lose any products I even rinsed the filter paper. The hot plate was set to 100 degrees celsius and stirring was turned on and I let it heat for about half an hour. The lumps became larger and it looked like a lot of the bromine dissolved in the water. I talked about bromine formation before and now a lot of bromine vapor was visible in the wastewater canister. The product looked much cleaner and I was ready to perform another gravity filtration. The beaker was allowed to cool down overnight before performing another gravity filtration followed by drying the product over an hydrous calcium chloride in a vacuum desiccator. It was allowed to dry over the course of two days and then the vacuum chamber was flushed with air. The product was quickly transferred to a pre-weighed storage bottle. In the end we were left with 55.1 grams which represents a yield of 52%. Before breaking off the video I would like to thank all of you for watching and I would especially like to thank my Patreons because you guys make it possible to film even cooler stuff. If you would like to become a Patreon too, check the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.